Uh, so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to invite someone who can spend a little bit of time talking about, uh, with me, how their organization is, is using Cloud Foundry, um, frankly, at a very high scale, um, doing very important things and running their business on Cloud Foundry. So I would like to invite Chuck Nosman, the Vice President of Digital Technology and Service and Strategy at T-Mobile. So Chuck, come on up. Hey. Come on over here. All right, so Chuck, thank you very much. Um, appreciate you coming. Yep. Um, we, we had a, a prep call uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, it was a very, very simple conversation. I said, you know, are you, are you using Cloud Foundry at all? He said, yeah, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. So maybe you could tell us a little bit about the journey that you went on. Um, yeah, we, uh, uh, well, first, let me talk a little bit about T-Mobile, uh, just to set a context. Um, we are at 73 million customers now. We've doubled in size in the last five years. Uh, we're changing the way we do our customer service, retail, um, expanding our network, 5G is coming, and we're doing IT transformation and IoT as well. It's, it's mm. coming as well. So, so you're a startup. Uh, yeah, we're a startup, yeah. essentially, um, with 73 million customers. Um, Great. So yeah, so uh, our, our journey actually started, um, it was funny, I, I, we had a uh, whiteboard session with James Waters and Aaron Heyer from Pivotal. Uh, in 2015. Mm -hmm. um, uh, they were talking about 12-factor applications at that time. Cloud Native qu didn't quite resonate at that point in time, but 12-factor uh, applications, how we should be refactoring our stuff, and uh, um, didn't believe them. Right. Um, came to the Cloud Foundry conference in 2015, saw the vibe, or felt the vibe, um, saw all the, all the participants, all the smart people that were uh, utilizing the platform or getting on the platform, and that was really the catalyst for us taking off. Um, we laid down a, a foundation, um, trained a lot, and we had Cornelia Davis come in, was one of our first trainers mm -hmm. uh, from Pivotal. Um, uh, 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 we started with uh, a middleware application or a, a service, if you will, that was right in the heart of what we were doing to prove this stuff out. Sure. Um, take so, I'm sorry, just to, yeah. I, I want to make, make sure I understood that. So you yeah. took the hardest part? Yeah, the yeah. Most important we, part you started. Yeah, there? we we tried a lot of things on the external side yeah. of, of of the ecosystem, um, and they would work because they were standalone and mm. and off on the side. Um, but they would never we never get scale off of them. Sure. So we decided we were going to go right at the heart of this stuff, um, right at our get customer, get subscriber information, um, and uh, start with that one. And if it worked, awesome, f or fail fast, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And uh, it worked. That's great. Um, yeah, and then so uh, we started building things out over 2016. 2017, um, about June, we were at about 1,000 containers running. By the end of the year, we were at 12,000 containers running. Mm -hmm. And right now, we're at 18,000 containers running on the platform. Well, that's really successful. Yeah. How many developers are, are working on it? Uh, 1,700. About 1,700 right now? We have right 1,700 uh, developers on the platform right wow. now. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, and it, it's, what's, what's really transformed for us is um, you know, we're, we're at peak during the day, we're about 10,000 transactions a second on the platform. Mm -hmm. Heart of everything we do, activations, upgrades, payments, loans, leases, everything coming through comes through this platform. Um, but at the same time, we're releasing about 30, we're doing about 30 CF pushes a day yeah. into that environment at the same time that all that's happening. And it's, um, it's, it's been actually spectacular for us. Oh, that's really amazing. Yeah. What, what's been the hard part? Uh, the, is the whole thing <coughs> well, of the whole transformation thing? Yeah, uh, people. Yeah. People. Um, okay. Well, yeah. I mean, you get used to doing things a certain way, and, and to change and have that that um, uh, that leap of faith or that step, right, mm -hmm. is a tough thing for people to go through. And once they did, it just caught on like wildfire. We have a great set of. Uh, uh, infrastructure people, developers, and ops guys that really care about our customers and T-Mobile, and it just took off. Cool. What, one of the things I, I like to always understand is um, when an organization gets to as many applications and containers and, and as many developers being supported as you have, yeah. um, what's, the, what's the operations look like? Um, well, uh, on the platform itself, we have, uh, I want to say, seven to ten people that operate that platform at mm. that scale. So we have nine foundations, I think, externally facing. They have three for themselves that they play with. Sure. Um, but think about that. We, we only have ten people operating a platform of that size um, where we used to have hundreds, right? Absolutely. And so that, that for, uh, from that perspective, then the operations teams are working on telemetry and, and truly getting into that DevOps mode. Mm -hmm. uh, telemetry, making sure that things are working correctly. Uh, Blue-green deployments, canary deployments are all enabled. 
um, by the platform. Is, is there any, so, so one of the things that strike me is, is when, you, when you get to a kind of a platform operations team that's as small as you just described it, yep. servicing as many developers as you have, yep. um, it seems like it would be an opportunity for some of that operational experience to make its way into the development teams. Oh, uh, well, it, it's, yeah, it, it, it's kind of funny that uh, um, uh, the oper the, the, what was our operation teams before yeah. um, are loving this because they have someone else that operates all the, all the hardware, everything else that's down below, and they can okay. focus on just helping those apps run, right? So, um, so you get that operation, those operations guys that are working really tight with the developers, and a lot of good things start coming out of that. A lot of automation starts coming yeah. out of that, and it just starts feeding on itself. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, one of, the, one of the key things that generally happens in software development teams if they're, when they're using Cloud Foundry, we, we tend to, uh, like peanut butter and jelly, go really well together with agile development techniques. Yeah. Has that been adopted at uh, as well? Weird, uh, uh, in, in many ways, um, agile has, has come to fruition. Yeah. Um, uh, we're still pushing for it. Sure. Um, we still have a lot of big uh, legacy monoliths out there that, mm -hmm. that like to work in the um, waterfall state. You know, big sure. billing systems, SAP systems, sorry, um, and other things that are out there that we're we're constantly trying to get them into that um, that agile mode, if you will. Yeah. Well, that's that makes sense. Yep. I mean, it's, it's a process of changing. Yep. Uh, so the teams that then that do use the agile techniques, maybe do pairing, maybe don't. Are they? Um, are they maybe the most prolific releasers, or do you, do you see the, maybe the more traditional development also working very well on top of Cloud Foundry? Uh, so, sorry, say that again. Well, does it require agile development to work well? No, with it, it really does. I mean, when we started out, we, weren't, we didn't have really um, sprint teams yeah. and all the other, uh, you know, the, the strict um, ceremonies around agile mm -hmm. and all that. Um, we just kind of went in and did it, right? Um, and the teams kind of formed around that. Um, what Agile really brings to us is that, that prediction, right? right. Uh, the, the two week, uh, the, the th thinking around two weeks instead of project based, you know, six month cycles and things like that. It really helps us to iterate through stuff very yeah. fast. Very cool. So, so you said back in, in 2015, uh, you went to the first Cloud Foundry Summit, yep. um, and you know you kind of inspired by the community. So, so maybe I'm going to give you an opportunity here because I'm sure there are a couple of folks that are contemplating whether they're going to oh. take this journey. What would you tell them? Uh, yeah, ask a lot of questions. Um, this stuff is real, uh, it, it does work. I mean, we're a pretty good poster child, I think along with the Comcast and some others, um, that at, at scale this stuff really does work. Um, I would really focus in on the uh, infrastructure platform side of things. We, like I said, we had a great infrastructure platform team. Uh, that team evangelized really well um, with the, uh, um, train those developers, train those operations guys put the automation on top that really, really does matter. Um, and then the last thing is make it frictionless. Um, DevOps teams hate friction. Um, and so make it easy for them to get on the platform and mm -hmm. all the value will start to come out. Outstanding, yeah. outstanding. Well, Chuck, thank you so much yeah. for coming. Thank you, Chip. Appreciate really appreciate you coming to talk to everybody. So yeah. that was Chuck, T-Mobile. Again, small startup.